uh, there's a rigid body I'll apply force F on the rigid body. So <coughs> let, let this be a disc and let this be a plank and let this be rough. Then what is the maximum force for which no slipping occurs or what is the minimum force for which slipping occurs? Either way, find maximum value of F for which no slipping occurs between the disc and the plank. Morning we applied force where? I think morning we applied force F. Okay, that I think on the plank we applied it. Anybody? Can you tell morning what we did? I think again instead of repeating the same problem. I'll check once. Morning we are did four. Uh, we, we, have, we have done this one. Huh? Okay, that one. I'll, I'll do one thing. Yeah. Let, let me apply force on the plank. Now what is the maximum value of force for which no slipping occurs? I'll, I'll give the question. Find the Okay, proceed in the similar way. Okay, no. Yeah, let's come to the. Now, what are the forces that will be acting? How, how the friction should act? The friction will oppose relative motion. <coughs> F will act again. This frictional force will act on the rigid body like this. This friction force, what it does, it will accelerate center of mass and it will set up torque. So how it is possible? As yes, it can happen here. And let the acceleration of this be A2. And we took two points, no? P1, P2. Now for no slipping, acceleration of P1 should be equal to P2. That will come later on. So let's write the equations of motion. On the plank, F minus small f equal to M2, A2. On the rigid, on the rolling rigid body, F should be equal to M1 A1 because only friction is what will accelerate the center of mass. Then the same at the same time friction will set up an anti-torque. You see, like a, this is R bar, this is F. So how the torque torque will be anti-clockwise. Torque will be anti-clockwise. So this should become F into R is equal to I C into alpha one. Okay, this is about the equation one, equation two, equation three. How many unknowns are there? Four unknowns are there, no? I need one more equation. So what is the basic equation I write? For no slipping. And tell me for no slipping, what shall I write? Acceleration of point P1 equal to acceleration of point P2. It's a very generalized, huh? don't bother anything big. So, but sir, earlier you wrote acceleration for pure rolling. Yes, now for pure rolling, the platform is accelerating. So therefore, acceleration of lowest point of the rigid body should be called acceleration of plank. This is the basic condition. So don't try it for pure rolling. A1 equal to R alpha 1. This is a condition for no slipping. What is acceleration of point P1? Tangent due to transitive motion, A1. Due to tangential acceleration, R alpha 1. What is acceleration of the plank? A2. Now substitute A1, F by M1. R alpha 1, 2F by M1, what is A2? Capital F minus small f by M2. Solving for capital F in terms of small f, we'll get the required answer. I think of all this, this is a central idea of the problem. Huh? No slipping. Yeah, no slipping means it then. When, but sir, like earlier, you wrote like this. 
here you just wrote because what is the acceleration of point P1? P2. The P2 is a ground, no? Ground will move, ground will never move, no? So here also the side idea is same. What is that one for no slipping or pure rolling? This is the thing. This is what? A1 minus R alpha 1. What is the acceleration of the ground? Zero. That's why it has become A1 equal to R alpha 1. Getting the idea? See, like, I, I don't think so. This this what a student should have thought like this. Sir, what do you mean by no slipping? The no slipping means this is what. If the ground also accelerates, then the conditions will come like this. Put the acceleration of the ground, then you discuss the problem. Okay, now let's solve for this one here. So let, let me bring all F terms on one side. Uh, this will be, I think, 4F by F1 is equal to F by M2. Oh, so, sorry, sorry. This will be 3F by M1 plus F by M2 is equal to F by M2. So if I solve for F, it should be 3 m2 by m1 plus m1 into the rolling friction. Oh, I, I'll keep on increase applied force. I, I'll keep on increase applied force. Rolling friction also will increase. So, but it should be static friction. No, it's a rolling friction. The rolling friction also acting here between the disc and the plank will increase. Then what is the maximum permitted value of rolling friction? Equal to limiting friction. Sir, so this is we are getting confused. You are saying uh, the friction varies as that of applied force. It was similar to static. At the same time, again saying it's a rolling friction. And again, you are writing mu s mg. Yes. What is the idea? What is the maximum permitted value of rolling friction is equal to limiting friction. But it is not a static friction. It's a rolling friction only. Again and again, I'm repeating that one. So I'll, I'll keep on increase applied force. So what is the maximum permitted value of mu s m1 g. So if I apply force less than this, no slipping occurs. If I apply force greater than this value, then between them slipping occurs, then you cannot write this equation. That's all. You can solve the problem, but you cannot write. Then then they, you can't write a1 equal to r alpha 1 then also. They may ask you problem with slipping also. Then no problem. Just you call a1. Then you cannot write this equation. That's all. These are all as usual. You can define it. See, to trouble you in exams, what they do? They give intentionally this force greater than F max. They'll ask you to find out the acceleration of the center of the disc. Center of mass of the disc. I think once you know F, <coughs> can you calculate A2? Oh, this is here. Plus one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think uh, fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, intentionally I'll apply force which is greater than F max. Then in that case, what will happen? Uh, what is the friction will act? Rolling, rolling friction or kinetic friction? It will be kinetic friction. I think problem is very simple. No, you, you know this FK. Can you get A1? S. Problem solved. So you should ready for all the things. In books open, they are just discussed only for no slipping. Intentionally I'll ask you problem with the slipping. So carry on, no problem. So I'll, I'll write the data like this, F less than F max, friction will be rolling. If F greater than F max, the friction acting will be kinetic. <coughs> Are you getting the idea? And for rolling friction, you can't write mu s mg. No. Kinetic friction, yes, you can write it. What is the kinetic friction now? This should be equal to FK, I'll write it. The friction will be kinetic. Then is equal to how much it is? Mu MNG. If they give mu K or anything, you substitute that. Okay, no, just have idea. It's a very, very good problem. Just a students, what happen are made to learn things here. I'll scroll down.
Now we'll take the next condition. And now in the same problem, if it is a Is there any rule that I should, I, I can apply force like this also, no? How to predict the direction of uh, friction here, no? So it all depends upon the rigid body. Now, can you remember now? So I think some very morning we have discussed. There is some threshold point will be there, no? I call that as a, for a disc, where is the, what is the threshold point? R by 2. For a ring, capital R. For a sphere, 2 R by 5. If you apply, if you apply force above threshold point, the friction will act in the direction of applied force, rolling friction. If you apply force below the threshold point, then what will happen the friction? The friction will act opposite to applied force. So whether the plank will move or not will determine where you are applied force. Now if I say this is a disc, I, 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 let me call this a disc, IC is equal to first case. IC is equal to MR square. So MR square by 2. And I'll put smaller equal to R by 2. Now tell me what happens here. What conditions will prevail here? The plank will be at rest. Sir, what is this? Why friction will not act? Yes, friction will not act. Then acceleration of center of mass A1. This alpha 1, that's all. The plank will be at rest. Plank will not move. Why friction will not act? I think you know. If you apply the force exactly at the threshold point. Here. Where R by 2. No friction will act here. So then plank will not move. No friction act, then plank will not move. No, same thing. Second case. I'm discussing for disk. It is a disk, no? MR square by 2. We know moment of inertia. Second case, let this be equal to 2R by 3. Uh, where is the point of application of force now? It has come. It's going to be the above threshold point, no? No, sure, no, no, what you can say in what action the friction should act here. <coughs> Center of mass will accelerate, there'll be torque. Friction, what action should friction will hack forward, and the plank friction on the plank will be there. in what action the plank will move in this direction. Then, condition for no slipping A2 should be equal to R alpha 1 minus A1. Things are reverse. And what is the condition for no slipping here? A1 equal to R alpha 1. So why plank will move? Because the friction on the disc will act towards right. And the plank on the on the plank will be towards left. I think the things are a little bit very systematic here. Already we have discussed in the morning. Now, similarly, if I bring the force, <coughs> R by 4. Uh, what do you mean by R by 4? Where it is? Below the threshold point. No? No, uh, in, in what action? I'm just showing for a disc, then, then with that you manage other things. If any other rigid body, you should manage it. Okay, this is rough. Uh, definitely, can you say in what action the friction? The friction will hang backward. The reason for that, uh, R by 4 is less than R by 2. The point of application of force is less than below the threshold point. So the friction here will act backward. And the friction on the plank will be like this. Center of mass will accelerate and this alpha 1. Condition for no slipping, A1 minus R alpha 1 should be equal to A2. 
So I think the where where you apply force matters a lot. In the second case, the force applied is where above the threshold point because for a disc, what is the threshold point? R by two, capital R by two. What is the radius of the disc? The radius of the disc is capital R. The, uh, try to understand. This is what happened. Threshold. Threshold point is R by two. Where is the point of application? Two R by three. Above the threshold point, no. If you apply force above the threshold point, in what action rolling friction will act? The rolling friction will act in the direction of applied force. Morning, what we discussed. So then, friction act. Then how alpha one should be? Then I, I'm I'm considering that this applied force will set up a torque. <coughs> Alpha one, I'm taking this one. So I'll solve it. If I get alpha one negative, then change the direction. But alpha one will be clockwise only. Take it for granted. Hmm? Trust your teacher. Hmm? The friction will like the friction on the plank will be like this. Then acceleration of the plank will be like this. Then condition for no slipping. Acceleration of the plank should be equal to r alpha one minus c one. Either way, you can write it. Huh? So I think you have to be very careful. No, you can't just take blindly. And go right in any direction you want friction. You should take care about the conditions. Morning, what I discussed that is very very important. Friction, what action will act here? Ah, hmm? uh, now till now, okay. Let's do one thing. I'm going to place a cylinder on cylinder. Let me place a plank. Till now, what happened? We discussed the problems where. the rigid body